Okay, so sometimes being a detective isn't always so depressing as it seems. You know, I'm always talking about macabre stuff, you know, murders and unsolved this. and But sometimes it's more than that. Meaning, it's not always about cold case homicides, unsolved homicides. There's cold cases that are mysteries uh, in history. Well, I just rhymed. I'm a poet and didn't know it. So, that's an Andrew Dice Clay thing. Yeah. It's a 90s thing. Anyhow, I love history. Okay? I love artifacts. I love cold cases. And I love Leonard Skinner. As you can see, my Hell House um, whiskey that a fan was so gracious to send me. Uh, I'll never drink it. I don't drink whiskey. I don't drink alcohol. But I mean, it's there. Okay? Um, I love it. Well, another fan uh, who's got to be probably, I'm going to guess, 71, 72 years old sent me now this is this is great this is kind of long story but not really let me explain it like this there's a fan that watches this show his name's john arnold now john he doesn't contact me all the time but he told me about a connection that he had with leonard skinner he was friends with gary rossington so gary rossington is was the lead guitarist well, they had three guitars, but he was a guitarist, an original founding member of Leonard Skinner. And he was the last original member, if you don't count Ricky Medlock. Uh, he's the last, and he died a year ago, a couple months, something like that, not, not long ago. John went to school with Gary and knew him. So John... With Gary's passing, I don't know, maybe John felt that his time was coming as well in his 70s because they were in the same grade together growing up from elementary school to high school. He said that he wanted to do me a solid. And I was like, well, what is that? He said, I'd like to send you all my yearbooks. Okay. Um, he says... Gary Rossington's in them, so is Alan Collins. Alan Collins is the other guitarist. I remember I said it was three guitarists. Gary Rossington, Alan Collins, Ed King. And then Ed King was re later replaced by Steve Gaines, who died in a pl the plane crash. Um, I was like, I was blown away. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take them. Are you kidding me? That's history, right? So, you can't see them all, but I'll show you some pictures. I mean, you know where I'm at over here. So, I mean, I, I've got all of the yearbooks from Lakeshore from 1964 to 1969. Some of them have Gary Rossington's photograph and Alan Collins' photograph in them. Some of them don't. It appears that they, and I. this is something I don't know. I like to say I know a lot about Leonard Skinner, but there's some things obviously I don't. And I believe that they probably dropped out of school, and that's why I don't see their senior photographs, and maybe their junior photographs in there. It appears that Alan was one year behind Gary. Now, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Yes, I think it's very cool. Uh, I mean, John was nice enough to send me, you know, a letter, sent me some more pictures, and so, I'm uh, unbelievably humbled I am to get such artifacts, such history, especially with something that I love a lot, which is the music of Leonard Skinner. I think Alan Collins is the most underrated guitar player of all time. I think he was the sound of Leonard Skinner, and Ronnie Van Zant is, well, Ronnie Van Zant. <laughs> uh, so, I love them. 
All right, they're my favorite music group of all time. So to get these old high school yearbooks is phenomenal. I used to have an old high school photo uh, yearbook of Steve Prefontaine from Marshfield High. I wish I would have kept that, but I didn't. I also had a letter from Steve Prefontaine, um, not addressed to me, it, but it was a full page letter and uh, I had that as well and I was struggling in college and I ended up selling that letter and that yearbook, I believe on eBay. I wish I would have kept them. But I digress. We're talking about Leonard Skinner, but we're talking about yearbooks, right? So what makes this... Why am I so excited? Well, because I feel that maybe I stumbled across something that no one has ever noticed. So I'm excited about it. I've researched it and I can't find anything about it. And it is this. So I'm sitting down today going through all these yearbook photos one two three four five six yearbooks that he sent me and i'm going through and i'm snapping pictures of gary rossington and alan collins and somebody else leonard skinner the gym teacher who was named the band you know i mean it's so much history there so i'm looking at all this stuff and i come to this this 1964 yearbook where Gary Rosington would be in seventh grade right and I'm going through the seventh grade pictures and I don't see anything for Gary Rosington no big deal right he missed picture day I would expect nothing less of Gary Rosington Prince Charming but as you know how they have yearbooks in alphabetic order all the names of the students I get down to the end with the very last person being named Judy Zingman. But then the names start, there's like 30 more names after that that are, they're in alphabetical order, but uh, they're just out of place. You know what I mean? It's almost like maybe they didn't, they weren't there for photo day and they got them later and they put them in or something that just it's odd it's an odd placement so as a detective what it catches my eye anything it's out of place listen I'm like that when I come home at night I pull in the driveway if I see something you know a shoe laying over here when it's supposed to be over there in the garage or something I take notice it's what I do so I'm looking at this yearbook and I'm like, well, this section of students doesn't look right. So I start going down through the names, you know, just briefly, but I get to the, the last line and a photograph there. And the photograph looks just like Gary Rosington because I'd just seen his eighth grade photograph. And now I'm on his seventh grade, you know, I was going down through the years to look. And I'm like, hmm. Sure looks like him to me. And I look at the name. And it, conf it, it just it solidifies my suspicions. So the name next to this gentleman's name is Gay Cosington. Well, you heard me right. Gay Cosington. So you have a photograph that looks just like Gary Rossington, he is not listed in the seventh grade photo section of the yearbook and the name next to it is so much similar to Gary Rossington. Gay Cosington, right? I'm like, that's Gary Rossington. That's the guitarist from Leonard Skinner. That's his seventh grade photo. Does anybody know this? You know, so I research it. I'm looking through, you know, I Google, um, going through and looking at Leonard Skinner yearbook, seeing what I can find. And everybody's like, yeah, there was a picture of Gary Rosington in these other yearbooks that I see and they're online. But nobody notices this. 
I think that's phenomenal. Not to my detective abilities, uh, just that I, for right now, I feel like I stumbled across something that Leonard Skinner historians maybe are not aware of. Now, I bet you people in 1964 Lakeshore High School 7th grade class noticed because they probably picked on Gary. Well, maybe not. Certainly not if Ronnie was around him. But, oh, hey, Gay Cosington. You know what I mean? So I email a couple people, take pictures of it. I put this on Facebook because I wanted to see if you guys would see the dis difference and similarities as well. And it's amazing to me how people can see different things. There's people that say, nope, doesn't even look nothing like them. The majority of people are like, yep, same person. When I saw it, I knew it was him, okay? And then you put in the other, you know, similarities with the name. It's deduction. That's all it is. Is it possible that that's Gary Rosington? Yes. If you're just looking at the pictures, right, everybody has an opinion. Yes, no, yes, no. It's possible. But then you go to the name. Then you go to him missing from that seventh grade picture. And through the art of deduction, I'm confident saying that that's Gary Rossington. Now, maybe I ain't the first one to find it, but I emailed a couple people, one being John Arnold, the extremely, extremely gracious individual who sent me these yearbooks to keep. And he's like, man, good catch. You know, he's like, I, I never noticed that. I, I never knew it. So I felt even more pride that I caught that. And I engaged him in a conversation like, why? why, why? Now I want it. Now I'm, I'm invested. Why would they do that? I'm sure that that's Gary Rosington's seventh grade photograph. But why now would it be listed under... Gay Cosington. Were they picking on him? Was he bullied? That's where my mind goes. Was it a joke? And he's like, he's like, absolutely not. He's like, mistake, stupidity, an error on the yearbook company. Maybe, and this is probably what I think, is they couldn't read his name. You know, maybe, you know, 1964 things weren't always done. They definitely weren't done by computer. Maybe typewriter, but more than likely, it was handwritten. So maybe Gary had to spell out his own name and they couldn't make it out. And he, he went from Gary Rossington, the world famous Leonard Skinner guitarist, Prince Charming, Ronnie Van Zant's right hand man, to Gay Cosington. It's unbelievable. I'm, I'm so, uh, uh, my mind's blown on this. It's nice to have something where I can smile. You know what I mean? Uh, working this Raven, Jane Doe, Ravensburg, and just doing the exit unsolves. There's nothing to smile about, right? Because there's victims. And, you know, it's depressing sometimes. As much as I enjoy working those cases, I get to do something like this. You know, and discover something maybe that nobody else has ever discovered. <laughs> Gary Rosington, I bet you he knew. He's probably like, them sons of guns. You know, here I am. He wasn't famous yet. Had they known he was going to be, maybe they wouldn't have made the mistake of calling him Gay Cosington. It blows my mind. Uh... So I, I just wanted to share that little antidote and story and discovery. I also sent an email to Craig Reed. Now Craig Reed is a former roadie and guitar tech for Leonard Skinner. He worked with other bands, I believe Foreigner, maybe 38 Special, and later with the, I believe... 
Rossington Collins band. After the plane crash, uh, Alan Collins and Gary Rossington started a band with Gary's wife, Dale, being the lead singer. Um, but Craig worked for all that. And Craig sells a lot of stuff on eBay. He has a podcast now. And we swapped some emails back and forth in the past. And I wanted to get his opinion. I mean, he knew Gary Rossington. First, I wanted to get his opinion just on the picture. Okay? Hey, are people seeing what I see? That That's the same person. I, I mean, I saw it like that. Um, and then, obviously, the other clues solidified it for me. I put, and again, I put a little poll on Facebook. I wanted to see what people would say. And I only had it on there for a couple hours, two hours, and I had like 300 comments of people saying, yes, it's the same. No, it's not. It reminds me of Billy the Kid in the croquet photo, you know. People vary and argue so much. That's why eyewitness testimony is not reliable. Okay? I'm just telling you like it is. Uh, for some people, yeah. But as an investigator, trying to rely on somebody, it's tough. People see different things. You know? When I looked at these two photographs, I knew it was Gary Rossington. Somebody else in Facebook, they're looking at it and they're like, nope, not him. Emphatically, no. So, I haven't heard back from Craig yet. I couldn't wait no longer. I wanted to get this out because it was exciting to me. The possibility that I discovered it something in the Leonard Skinner community that nobody knew uh, because John sent me these things that's pretty cool to me now once this video will get out and you know i'll announce on facebook hey the reason i was asking and i'll tell them why um somebody undoubtedly will probably say well we f we knew this 20 years ago somebody discovered it maybe they did i just haven't seen it so i'm gonna live for the moment now that I discovered something in the Leonard Skinner history that maybe nobody knows. Because I wonder, as much as of a, uh, mm, let me pick my words correctly here, as much crazy, how's that, that Ronnie Van Zant and Alan Collins both got when they were drinking that I would be shocked if they didn't call him when they're drunk Gay Cosington. They had to have known, especially Alan Collins. You know, I, I just I find that fascinating. I wonder if any buddy from like Craig Reed or the other people that worked for Leonard Skinner and partied with them, you know, maybe hearing the word gay Cosington snaps them back 50 years ago and be like, hey, I remember Ronnie Van Zant calling Gary Rosington gay Cosington. This, uh, I can't wipe the permagrin off. I don't know why. I find it funny. I find it, uh, I, you know, astounding, humbling, you know, feels good to talk about something that makes you smile. So anyhow, I wish I could play some Leonard Skinner music right here uh, to, but YouTube will probably block me. Facebook's already blocking me for stuff. I have no idea why. It's why I hate social media so much. I, but anyhow. That's it. Just wanted to share this. I'm so thankful that I, I have fans that will send me this type of stuff. You know? Um, I just appreciate it so very much. I, I just wish I could return the favor somehow, some way. Um, and if I can, just please let me know. So, 
that's it. Leonard Skinner history. I think I might be a part of it now. Hopefully in the Wikipedia section somewhere, uh, 10, 20 years from now, it will say, Detective Ken Maines discovered that Gary Rossington is actually Gay Consington. <laughs> uh, anyhow, thanks for watching. Hands out. Try to make a dollar out of a dime Don't seem to work without overtime Everybody wants